Ever wondered about the secrets behind the making of the classic television show, MASH? This groundbreaking series, set during the Korean War, drew in millions of viewers with its unique mix of humor and drama. Its finale remains the most watched scripted show in American TV history. But what went on behind the scenes? Many cast members were in the dark about their characters' fates. For instance, some had no idea their characters would meet their end. There were also surprises regarding the cast's military service. For example, did you know that Loretta Swit, who played Major Margaret Houlihan, was almost replaced? The mysteries surrounding this beloved show are finally unveiled, providing a fresh look at the people who brought these unforgettable characters to life. Prepare to discover a new perspective on MASH and its enduring legacy. The popular 1970s TV series MASH is based on the 1968 novel MASH written by Richard Hooker, who used the pen name Dr. H. Richard Hornberger and writer W.C. Hines. The novel, which is a humorous account of the experiences of three army doctors, served as the inspiration for the show. Interestingly, McLean Stevenson, who eventually played the role of Colonel Henry Blake in the series, had initially aimed to portray the character of Hawkeye. This just goes to show how roles and casting can change during the production process. The show, which became a classic, remained on air for an impressive 11 seasons, captivating audiences with its unique blend of humor and drama set against the backdrop of the Korean War. In the 1972 TV series MASH, two of its cast members, Jamie Farr and Alan Alda, brought a unique sense of realism to their roles, having served in the military themselves. Far, who played the character of Max Klinger, had served in Japan and Korea, which undoubtedly added authenticity to his performance. Meanwhile, Alda, who portrayed the lead role of Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, joined the Army Reserve after graduating from Fordham University. The on-screen camaraderie between Alda and Mike Farrell, who played Captain B.J. Honeycutt, was not just acting. The two had a competitive relationship off-screen, engaging in physical challenges such as learning to stand on their hands. This friendly rivalry added an extra layer of authenticity to their on-screen friendship, making their characters even more relatable to the audience. The competitive nature of Alda and Farrell was not limited to physical challenges. They both had a deep passion for their craft and were always striving to deliver the best performance possible. This drive to excel, combined with their military backgrounds, helped create two of the most memorable and enduring characters in television history. In MASH, the competitive nature of its two lead actors was just one of the many factors that contributed to its success. The show's realistic portrayal of military life, combined with its sharp wit and humor, resonated with audiences and helped it become one of the longest running and most beloved TV shows of all time. In the initial stages of casting for MASH, comedian Robert Klein turned down the role of Trapper John which eventually went to Wayne Rogers. Interestingly, Rogers never signed a contract and was free to leave the show at any time. This freedom allowed him to quit the series after the third season due to disagreements over his character's development. Meanwhile, the character of Klinger, initially intended to appear only once as a homosexual character, became a beloved figure on the show. Klinger's appearance in the episode Radar's report was meant to be a one-time occurrence but the positive response from audiences led to his return in later episodes. Despite the controversy surrounding Klinger's character, his inclusion in the show marked a significant step towards more diverse and inclusive representation in television. The character's warmth and humor resonated with viewers, making him a fan favorite. As for Trapper John, Roger's decision to leave the show came as a surprise to many. However, the show's producers were able to find a suitable replacement in Mike Farrell who joined the cast as B.J. Honeycutt. The addition of Honeycutt helped to soften the blow of Trapper John's departure and kept the show's dynamic intact. Overall, the casting and character development in M.A.S.H. were marked by unexpected twists and turns. From the rejection of the Trapper John role by Robert Klein to the surprise success of Klinger's character, the show's creators proved themselves to be adaptable and open to change. In the creation of the groundbreaking TV series M.A.S.H., Producers had a clear vision to highlight the serious subject matter of the Korean War without the distraction of a laugh track. However, the network, CBS, had different plans. They insisted on using a laugh track, but the producers were able to negotiate 
and secure one concession, the operating room scenes would be laugh track free. As the show progressed, the producer's original vision began to prevail. The laugh track became more subdued, allowing the audience to fully engage with the show's complex themes and emotions. This decision added depth to the characters and made the series stand out in the world of television. The use of a laugh track, or lack thereof, played a significant role in shaping the tone and impact of MASH. By avoiding the use of a laugh track in key scenes, the show was able to tackle serious subject matter with the respect and nuance it deserved. This classic TV series proved that comedy and drama can coexist, and that television has the power to both entertain and enlighten. The first episode of MASH, written by Larry Gelbart and directed by Gene Reynolds, aired on September 17, 1972, and quickly gained significant recognition. The show's success can be attributed to its unique blend of comedy and drama, which struck a chord with audiences. Interestingly, only one actor, Alan Alda, knew about a major plot twist before filming. Alan Alda, who played Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, was the only cast member aware of the shocking demise of the Henry Blake character. The character's fate was a closely guarded secret, and the rest of the cast was kept in the dark until the filming of the scene. This added an element of surprise and emotion to the episode, which was palpable on screen. The cast of MASH was a talented group of actors who brought their characters to life in a way that resonated with viewers. Each actor brought their unique perspective and talent to the show, creating a dynamic and engaging ensemble. Despite the challenges of filming a comedy drama in a challenging setting, the cast remained committed to delivering authentic and memorable performances. In conclusion, the pilot episode of MASH set the stage for a classic television series that would captivate audiences for over a decade. The show's success can be attributed to its talented cast, unique blend of comedy and drama, and the element of surprise that was woven into the fabric of the show. The legacy of MASH continues to endure, and its impact on television history is undeniable. MASH, the popular television series, became known for featuring future stars before they made it big in the industry. Among these talents were Ron Howard, Leslie Nielsen, and Patrick Swayze. The show had an impressive duration, lasting for 11 years and producing 256 episodes, which is quite remarkable considering the Korean War it was based on only lasted for about three years. The series premiered on September 17, 1972, and continued to entertain audiences until its final episode aired on February 28, 1983. Over the course of its run, MASH tackled various themes and storylines, capturing the attention and hearts of viewers across the country. Throughout the show's long history, it provided a platform for numerous guest stars to showcase their talents. While some of these actors were already established in their careers, others were just starting out and used MASH as a stepping stone to greater success. In the end, MASH proved to be a remarkable television series that not only featured talented guest stars, but also managed to maintain its popularity over an extended period. Its ability to resonate with audiences and remain relevant for 11 years is a testament to the show's enduring appeal and the skill of its creators and cast members. Alan Alda, a prominent figure in MASH, not only excelled as an actor, but also made significant contributions as a director and writer. He directed a total of 31 episodes and co-wrote 13, showcasing his multi-talented abilities. Alda's portrayal of Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce remains a memorable part of this classic. On the other hand, Radar's iconic plush bear, a beloved symbol of comfort and innocence, went missing for three decades. Its recent discovery and auction brought it back into the limelight. Jay Borofsky, the actor who played Radar, was the lucky bidder who got to take the bear home. This heartwarming reunion brought back memories of the show's earlier days and added another chapter to its enduring legacy. In the final season of the popular TV series MASH, a time capsule was buried as a part of an episode storyline. Remarkably, this capsule was discovered by a construction worker months after the shooting had wrapped up. The capsule, filled with mementos from the show, served as a tangible connection to the past, encapsulating the memories of the cast and crew who had worked tirelessly to bring the series to life. Loretta Swit, an integral part of the MASH ensemble, appeared in all but 11 of the 256 episodes. Swit's character, Major Margaret Hot Lips Houlihan, was a central figure in the show's narrative 
providing both comedic relief and moments of intense drama. Switt's portrayal of Houlihan was a significant contribution to the show's enduring popularity as she brought depth and nuance to a character that could have easily been reduced to a one-dimensional stereotype. Switt's dedication to the role was unwavering, and her absence from only 11 episodes is a testament to her commitment to the show. Over the course of the series, viewers watched as Houlihan evolved from a strict and by the book army nurse to a more relaxed and empathetic character. Switt's ability to convey this transformation was a crucial factor in the show's success, as it allowed audiences to connect with Houlihan on a deeper level. The time capsule buried in the final season of MASH serves as a reminder of the show's cultural significance and the impact it had on audiences around the world. Switt's portrayal of Major Margaret Hot Lips Houlihan was a key component of this success as she brought depth, nuance, and humanity to a character that could have easily been reduced to a caricature. The discovery of the time capsule months after the show had wrapped up was a poignant reminder of the enduring legacy of MASH and the unforgettable characters that populated its world. Loretta Swit, who played Major Margaret Houlihan on MASH, had a few favorite episodes. Among them were Hot Lips and Empty Arms, where her character grappled with the end of a relationship and Margaret's engagement, which focused on her character's romantic life once again. Swit also enjoyed The Nurses, an episode that highlighted the contributions of the female characters in the series. Alan Alda, who played Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, left an indelible mark on MASH. He was the first person to achieve a rare Emmy feat, winning for writing, directing, and acting for his work on the series. Alda's writing and directing credits included episodes such as In Love, In War, and The Storytellers, while his acting skills were on full display throughout the series' run. Alda's achievements extended beyond his Emmy wins. He was instrumental in shaping the tone and direction of M.A.S.H., and his character's wit and sensitivity helped make the show a classic. Swit's favorite episodes offer a glimpse into the show's exploration of relationships and the lives of its female characters, while Alda's Emmy wins and contributions to the series highlight his versatility and impact on M.A.S.H. In the classic TV series M.A.S.H., the names given to minor characters often held significance. For instance, one 1977 episode featured characters named after the California Angels baseball team, highlighting the writer's interest or connection to the team. Another notable character was named after the writer's ex-girlfriend, suggesting a less than favorable portrayal of the character. This detail adds an intriguing layer to the show, as it hints at the personal experiences and relationships that influenced its creation. The use of such names allows for a more intimate and nuanced storytelling, enriching the viewer's experience and inviting them to explore the character's backgrounds and motivations further. By weaving personal connections into the fabric of the show, MASH manages to create a captivating and enduring tapestry of humor, drama, and humanity. As the popularity of MASH grew, so did the cast's involvement in the creative process. They began to express their concerns about the plot lines, particularly during the filming of winter scenes and sweltering heat. The discomfort of wearing heavy clothing in 90 degree weather led to discontent among the actors. One of the show's beloved characters, Radar O'Reilly, played by Gary Berghoff, even got his own spin-off series. In Walter, Radar becomes a detective after losing his family. Unfortunately, the show only aired once, leaving fans wondering what could have been. Despite the setbacks, MASH remained a classic television series, leaving a lasting impact on audiences and shaping the way we view television today. The show's ability to tackle serious issues while maintaining its comedic tone resonated with viewers, making it a beloved and enduring part of television history. In the world of MASH, one character's popularity led to an unexpected change. Larry Linville, who played Major Frank Burns, had a son named Kelly. When the writers created a character for Burns' son, they named him after Kelly. However, the actor playing the son, Jeff Maxwell, was intended for a single appearance. Yet, his performance was so well received that he became a regular character, much to the surprise of the show's creators. Meanwhile, Mike Farrell, who played B.J. Honeycutt, decided to make a personal touch to his character. When B.J. became a father in the show, Farrell requested that his character's daughter be named Erin, after his real-life daughter. 
The producers agreed, and Aaron Honeycutt was born into the MASH universe. This classic TV series, MASH, was known for its ability to adapt and evolve, and the characters' names were just one example. The show's willingness to make changes based on audience reactions and actors' personal preferences helped it become a beloved and enduring piece of television history. MASH was a groundbreaking TV series that aired from 1972 to 1983. It was based on the 1970 film of the same name and set during the Korean War. The show was well received by audiences and critics alike, and it quickly became one of the most popular shows on television. The series tackled serious issues such as war, death, and mental health with humor and sensitivity. It was praised for its realistic portrayal of military life and its anti-war message. The show's talented cast, including Alan Alda, Loretta Swit, and Gary Berghoff, helped to make it a hit. MASH had a significant impact on popular culture. It spawned several spin-off series, including Trapper John M.D. and Aftermash. The show also inspired a wide range of merchandise, including toys, games, and clothing. The series' legacy can still be felt today. It remains one of the most beloved and enduring TV shows of all time. Its themes and messages continue to resonate with audiences, and it has inspired countless other shows and films. In short, MASH was a classic TV series that left a lasting impact on popular culture. Its realistic portrayal of military life, anti-war message, and talented cast helped to make it a hit, and its legacy continues to be felt today. The casting process for MASH, the groundbreaking 1972 TV series, was a fascinating journey. Producers sought actors who could embody the humor, heart, and humanity of the beloved MASH film. For the role of Captain Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, the producers wanted someone with charm, wit, and depth. Alan Alda, an experienced stage and screen actor, won the part. His ability to balance comedy and drama made him an ideal choice. To play the wise-cracking, pragmatic Corporal Maxwell Q. Klinger, the producers chose Jamie Farr. Initially, Farr appeared in the pilot as a one-time character. However, the producers were impressed by his chemistry with the cast and decided to make Klinger a regular. Gary Berghoff, a stage actor known for his role in the original MASH film, was cast as the lovable, slightly eccentric Corporal Walter Radar O'Reilly. His familiarity with the character and endearing portrayal made him a perfect fit. The role of the stern, traditional, and by the book major Frank Burns went to Larry Linville. Linville's ability to portray Burns's comedic ineptitude and underlying vulnerability made the character more nuanced. Loretta Swit, an accomplished stage actress, was cast as Major Margaret Hotlips Houlihan. Swit brought a unique blend of strength, vulnerability, and humor to the role, subverting the stereotypical portrayal of Houlihan in the film. William Christopher, a veteran of stage and screen, joined the cast as Father John Francis Patrick Mulcahy. His gentle, compassionate portrayal of the character added a layer of humanity to the series. The casting of MASH was a careful process, with producers looking for actors who could bring depth and humanity to their roles. The result was a talented ensemble that would captivate audiences for over a decade. The directorial vision behind the 1972 TV series MASH can be traced back to its skilled director, Gene Reynolds. With a background in acting and a deep appreciation for character-driven stories, Reynolds approached MASH with a unique perspective. Reynolds' creative influences included the classic film MASH, directed by Robert Altman, as well as his own military experience. He aimed to create a realistic and often humorous portrayal of life in a mobile army surgical hospital during the Korean War. Reynolds' directing style was collaborative and focused on the ensemble cast. He encouraged actors to contribute to their character's development, resulting in a genuine and engaging on-screen dynamic. Reynolds also worked closely with the show's writers, ensuring that the scripts aligned with his vision and the character's growth. The director's attention to detail extended to the show's visual elements. Reynolds often used long takes and tracking shots to immerse viewers in the MASH unit's chaotic environment. He also incorporated handheld cameras to capture the raw emotions of the characters. Reynolds' collaborative approach extended to the show's crew as well. He worked closely with cinematographers, set designers, and costume designers to create a cohesive and authentic visual language for MASH. 
In summary, Gene Reynolds' directorial vision for MASH was characterized by his commitment to character development, collaborative spirit, and attention to detail. His approach resulted in a groundbreaking TV series that continues to resonate with audiences today. The production of the 1972 TV series MASH took viewers right into the heart of the Korean War, with its realistic set design and locations. The show's creators wanted to give audiences an authentic experience, so they paid close attention to detail when designing the set. The 20th Century Fox Studios in Los Angeles became the home for the 477th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, where the series was mainly filmed. A massive soundstage was transformed into a realistic military encampment, complete with tents, jeeps, and helicopters. The set designers even went as far as covering the floor with hundreds of pounds of gravel to replicate the muddy and, and dusty conditions of a wartime hospital. To make the set feel more cramped and claustrophobic, they constructed the tents and buildings closer together than they would be in a real military camp. Despite the controlled environment of a soundstage, filming MASH was not without its challenges. The set's design required a lot of coordination and logistical planning. For instance, the medical tents needed to be arranged in a specific order to ensure that the surgical scenes were as realistic as possible. Additionally, the show's writers often added last-minute changes to the script, which required the set designers to make quick adjustments to the set. To capture the outdoor scenes, the production team ventured to the Malibu Creek State Park in California. This location provided the perfect backdrop for the show's outdoor scenes, with its rolling hills and lush greenery. However, filming in an outdoor location presented its own set of challenges. The crew had to deal with unpredictable weather conditions, such as rain and high winds, which often disrupted filming. One innovative technique employed during the production of MASH was the use of handheld cameras. This approach allowed the camera operators to move around the set more freely creating a more dynamic and immersive viewing experience. The use of handheld cameras also gave the show a documentary style feel, which added to its realism. Another technological advancement used during the production of MASH was the use of video playback. This technology allowed the directors and actors to review their performances immediately after filming, which helped them make necessary adjustments and improvements. Video playback also allowed the show's writers to see how their scripts were being translated onto the screen, which helped them make any necessary rewrites. In conclusion, the production of MASH was a complex and challenging endeavor. The set designers, writers, and crew members worked tirelessly to create a realistic and immersive viewing experience for audiences. Through the use of innovative techniques and technologies, they were able to bring the Korean War to life creating a show that would resonate with viewers for generations to come. The creation of the MASH score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort that significantly contributed to the show's emotional depth and narrative cohesion. Johnny Mandel, the Emmy-winning composer, played a pivotal role in crafting the series' memorable music. Mandel drew inspiration from the show's subject matter, the Korean War, and the lives of the military personnel portrayed in MASH. He aimed to capture the emotional turmoil and dark humor that permeated the series. The main title theme, Suicide is Painless, encapsulated the show's blend of tragedy and comedy. The song's lyrics, although dark, were rarely heard in the instrumental version used for the series. Musicians involved in the soundtrack, such as orchestra leader Patrick Williams, praised Mandel's ability to create music that perfectly complemented the series' tone. According to Williams, Mandel's compositions had a wonderful way of underlining the humor without being funny themselves. The score was primarily orchestral, with lush strings and poignant woodwinds. Mandel's use of leitmotifs, recurring musical themes associated with specific characters or ideas, further enriched the series. For instance, the Suicide is Painless theme often accompanied the character of Hawkeye Pierce, portrayed by Alan Alda, reflecting his cynical yet compassionate nature. The soundtrack also featured popular music from the 1950s and early 1960s, which added a layer of nostalgia and reminded viewers of the characters' lives before the war. These songs were carefully chosen to reflect the characters' emotions and the events unfolding in each episode. In conclusion, the MASH score and soundtrack were essential components of the show's success. The music, both original and sourced, enhanced the narrative and emotional tone, providing viewers with a richer, and more engaging viewing experience.
One of the most iconic scenes in M.A.S.H. is the Suicide is Painless episode in the third season. In this scene, Hawkeye and Trapper attempt to cheer up their friend, Captain Walter Painless Paul Waldowski, who fears he's lost his manhood after a one-night stand with a nurse. The direction in this scene is brilliant, with the use of dark and light to convey the character's emotions. The scene opens in a dimly lit tent, with Painless appearing small and vulnerable in his bed. As Hawkeye and Trapper enter, the light brightens, symbolizing their plan to lift Painless spirits. The performances are exceptional, particularly by Wayne Rogers as Trapper and Alan Alda as Hawkeye. They bring a perfect balance of humor and sincerity to the scene, making it both entertaining and Hart Lieutenant. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with close-ups of the characters' faces that allow the audience to connect with their emotions. The use of shadows and light adds depth and meaning to the scene. This scene had a significant impact on the audience as it showcased the emotional depth of the characters and the realities of war. According to Alda, we wanted to show that these guys had feelings and that they were struggling with the horrors of war in their own way. Another iconic scene is the Abyssinia Henry episode in the final season where Colonel Henry Blake is killed in a helicopter crash on his way home. The scene is a powerful example of the emotional impact of war and it left a lasting impression on the audience. The direction in this scene is masterful, with the use of silence and stillness to convey the shock and sadness of the characters. The camera lingers on their faces, allowing the audience to fully grasp the weight of the moment. The performances are heart-wrenching, particularly by McLean Stevenson as Henry Blake. His final line, I'll never make it home to Iowa, is delivered with a quiet resignation that is both heartbreaking and powerful. The cinematography is simple yet effective, with a focus on the characters' faces and reactions. The use of close-ups and stillness adds to the emotional impact of the scene. This scene had a profound impact on the audience as it was a stark reminder of the realities of war and the sacrifices made by those who serve. According to Stevenson, it was a tough scene to film, but it was important to show the human cost of war. In conclusion, the iconic scenes in M.A.S.H. are a testament to the power of storytelling and the emotional depth of the characters. Through exceptional direction, performance, and cinematography, these scenes have left a lasting impact on the audience and continue to resonate today. The groundbreaking 1972 TV series MASH quickly resonated with audiences due to its unique blend of comedy and drama set against the backdrop of the Korean War. The show's ability to tackle serious issues with humor struck a chord with viewers, making it a cultural phenomenon that would endure for over a decade. MASH struck a nerve with the American public, as the country was still reeling from the aftermath of the Vietnam War. The series provided a platform for discussions about the realities of war, the emotional toll it takes on soldiers, and the importance of camaraderie and friendship in difficult times. The show's influence on pop culture was immense. Characters like Hawkeye, Trapper John, and Hot Lips Houlihan became household names, and the series' distinctive blend of humor and drama paved the way for future shows like Cheers, The Office, and MASH itself, which continued to push boundaries in its later seasons. Moreover, MASH contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The series tackled issues such as racism, sexism, and homophobia, challenging societal norms, and encouraging viewers to question their own biases. The show's diverse cast and realistic portrayal of military life also helped to humanize soldiers and veterans, breaking down stereotypes and fostering greater understanding. In short, MASH left an indelible mark on American culture and television history. Its impact can still be felt today as the show's themes and characters continue to resonate with audiences and inspire new generations of storytellers. MASH, the 1972 TV series, was met with critical acclaim and enthusiastic audience reactions. The show's unique blend of comedy and drama, set against the backdrop of the Korean War, struck a chord with viewers seeking to make sense of the turbulent times. The New York Times hailed MASH as a consistently funny, unflinchingly realistic, and, at times, deeply moving show. The Los Angeles Times echoed this sentiment, praising the series for its sharp writing, excellent acting, and a remarkable ability to find humor in the midst of horror. Audiences responded with equal enthusiasm. MASH quickly became one of the most popular shows on television, 
with an average of 106 million viewers per episode during its final season. The show's memorable characters, including Hawkeye Pierce, Trapper John McIntyre, and Radar O'Reilly, became cultural icons and enduring symbols of the era. MASH also received numerous awards and nominations. The show won a total of 14 Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Comedy Series in 1973 and 1974. It also received four Golden Globe Awards, including Best Television Series Musical or Comedy in 1974 and 1975. These accolades were a testament to the talent and dedication of the cast and crew who worked tirelessly to create a show that resonated with audiences and critics alike. The awards also helped to solidify MASH's place in television history as a groundbreaking and influential series. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to its timeless themes and universal appeal. MASH remains a beloved classic, with its memorable characters and unforgettable moments continuing to captivate new generations of viewers. The show's legacy is a lasting tribute to the vision and creativity of its creators who dared to explore the complexities of the human experience in a way that was both entertaining and thought-provoking. During the filming of the 1972 TV series MASH, the cast and crew experienced several memorable moments behind the scenes. For instance, Alan Alda, who played Hawkeye Pierce, often ad-libbed his lines, adding spontaneity and humor to the show. There were also instances where the actors struggled to keep a straight face during filming, leading to genuine laughter that added to the authenticity of the performances. Additionally, the camaraderie among the cast members extended off-screen, with many forming lasting friendships and bonds. The set of MASH was known for its lively atmosphere, with practical jokes and light-hearted antics contributing to the overall sense of camaraderie. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes offer a personal glimpse into the experiences of the cast and crew, showcasing the dynamics that contributed to the show's enduring success. MASH, the groundbreaking 1972 TV series, etched its place in film history through its unique blend of comedy and drama set against the backdrop of the Korean War. The show's innovative storytelling and character development inspired future filmmakers and left an indelible mark on the television industry. Created by Larry Gelbart, MASH was based on the 1970 film of the same name, which was, in turn, adapted from Richard Hooker's novel. The series followed the staff of the 477th Mobile Army Surgical Hospital, using their experiences to explore themes of war, camaraderie, and the human condition. MASH's impact on future filmmaking can be seen in its ability to balance humor and drama, often within the same scene. This approach allowed the show to tackle serious subjects with sensitivity while providing moments of levity for the audience. The series also broke new ground in its depiction of war, focusing on the emotional and psychological effects on its characters rather than glorifying combat. The show's influence extended beyond its narrative techniques, as MASH also became a pioneer in long-form storytelling on television. The series was known for its character development and ongoing story arcs, which were rare at the time. This approach allowed the show to delve deeper into the lives of its characters, creating a more immersive experience for viewers. MASH's legacy can be seen in numerous subsequent works, such as the TV series China Beach and Hogan's Heroes, as well as films like Good Morning, Vietnam, and Forrest Gump. These productions all share MASH's ability to combine humor and drama, often in the context of war, while also focusing on character development and long-form storytelling. In conclusion, MASH's lasting legacy and influence can be found in its innovative storytelling techniques, its groundbreaking approach to long-form storytelling, and the numerous subsequent works it inspired. By balancing humor and drama and focusing on character development, MASH left an indelible mark on the television industry and continues to resonate with audiences today. Did MASH, the groundbreaking 1972 TV series, leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear your stories. Share your experiences and memories related to this revolutionary show and how it may have influenced your perspective on cinema. Perhaps you were captivated by the compelling characters, the gripping storylines, or the unique blend of comedy and drama. Maybe MASH inspired you to explore new genres or even pursue a career in film. We're eager to learn how this iconic series has left its mark on you. 
So don't be shy, like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Let's start a conversation and celebrate the enduring legacy of MASH together.